guests. Thank you for your invitation. It is truly a pleasure and an honor to address you at the 2022 Delphi Economic Forum. It could not be more befitting in today's changing world for this forum to return to its customary premises and to convene its seventh annual meeting in this historic town, a town recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, symbolizing unity in the ancient Greek world. Because in these precarious times, European unity is being put to the test like never before. With Putin's criminal invasion of sovereign Ukraine, the peace we have long known in Europe has been shattered. It has changed everything, probably forever. Europe's response to Putin's regime will forever be marked down in the pages of our history books. I am proud that when faced with this existential threat, the European Union stood united in condemning Russian aggression and in expressing our solidarity with Ukrainians fighting an unlawful, unprovoked and unnecessary invasion. To combat the war, we believe that our response must remain proportionate to the serious, real and growing threat to our collective security. And this is why we have imposed crippling sanctions on Putin's regime. But we also believe in providing financial help. The European Union has shown solidarity with Ukraine with a package of 1.2 billion euros in macro financial assistance. We are already providing a further 500 million euros for the purchase and delivery of weapons and aid to Ukraine. And I expect that this will soon be doubled, given that there is a general agreement of the EU foreign ministers that more is needed. In a month of war, almost 4 million Ukrainians have been forced to leave their country, the majority of which are women and children. Our EU member states are rallying to welcome them. In fact, the level of support across all EU member states is heartwarming. There is a genuine sense of solidarity between European like-minded people. Fundamentally, European citizens understand the plight of Ukrainians. And apart from that, the European Union remains attentive to the situation in neighboring countries, Belarus, Georgia, and in particular in Moldova. Just last week, the European Parliament authorized 150 million euros in assistance and approved the deployment of Frontex, the European Border and Coast Guard Agency, to provide operational support to Moldova. But apart from solutions to combat the war, the European Union must now also urgently reassess its role in the world. Firstly, we need to urgently boost our investment in defence and in innovative technologies and continue to build a real security and defence union. One that can be proactive, flexible, agile and resilient. One that is capable of countering new threats. And that means putting our money where our mouth is. It means raising our national budgets and it means making intelligent use of our common EU budget to ensure that capability needs can be matched by collective funding where necessary. Secondly, we need to double down on our efforts to reduce our energy dependence on the Kremlin. Energy is and always has been ultimately political. And this is why our target must be towards a future of zero gas from Russia, ambitious but necessary. The European Parliament has been a strong proponent of renewable energy objectives, increasing interconnections between member states, stepping up our storage capacity and reducing reliance on single suppliers. The move towards renewable energy is not only necessary to achieve climate objectives, but also necessary in terms of our security. Thirdly, we must talk about more about food security. Let's be clear, the lack of food in other parts of the world will have an impact in Europe. This is why our supply lines must become clearer and stronger, and why food security must become part and parcel of our discussions on Europe's strategic autonomy. And yet, throughout this reflection process, we cannot forget that we are also in a period of health and economic recovery. It is now two years since the outbreak of the COVID global pandemic, and more than six million people have died from the disease worldwide. We have rolled out testing and vaccinations extensively, and thankfully the worst is behind us. However, we must remember that the pandemic has had, and continues to have, a profound impact on the health of our communities and people, and on the health of our small and medium-sized enterprises and economy. It is not good enough to speak of returning back to normal, but we must look and work towards making sure that our union becomes more resilient and better equipped at handling future health and economic crises. This is why we must urgently speed up the green and digital transitions, while also making concrete steps to move towards a coherent EU public health policy. I am proud that the European Union is once again united on this agenda. Thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts at this prestigious forum.